One year ago, I stood on the steps of Downing Street and promised to deliver for the people of this country. Today, the results are clear. Inflation is down, easing the burden of the cost of living. The economy is growing and debt is falling. There's more to do on cutting NHS waiting lists, but we've made progress. Where do I even start with this bollocks? Debt is falling. That's completely untrue, and the Prime Minister knows it. Public sector debt under this government is actually rising in cash terms, real terms, and most importantly, as a percent of income. In fact, this government has given us the highest debt in 60 years. And that dire situation is unlikely to change any time soon under a Conservative government. Don't just take my word for this. Listen to Chancellor Jeremy Hunt speaking to Sky News on October 13th. The numbers are definitely worse than what I faced in the spring. Really, they, our, are, they are worse, are they? Our debt interest is likely to be 20 to 30 billion pounds higher this year than we predicted in the spring. If the Prime Minister had said this in Parliament, debt is falling. There would have been immediate cries for him to correct the record. So why is he being allowed to get away with it in public? Inflation is down easing the burden of the cost of living. Well, let's just sit on a shelf for a moment. It was this government that gave us the highest inflation in 40 years in the first place. And on that, don't just take my word for it. Energy bills doubling, inflation at a 40 year high. UK inflation stayed at 6.7% in September and food inflation was a staggering 9.9%. Is it any wonder a million adults in this country can't even afford to eat every day? 9 million are skipping meals and cutting back on food, and a record 2.1 million people are now using food banks. And contrary to what the Prime Minister keeps telling us, bringing down inflation is not a tax cut for hard up families. Falling inflation just means prices are rising more slowly than they were before. It does not mean that price levels are actually falling. So it won't immediately help the families now struggling to put food on the table. And remember this, when inflation was last at 2.5% in 2021, there were over 13 million people living in poverty under this government. That figure has now increased to more than 14 million. The economy is growing. Well, imagine the shock for the Prime Minister when he finds out the Bank of England has just forecasted zero growth in 2024 and an expansion of just 0.25% in 2025. And he'll fall off his chair when someone tells him that according to the International Monetary Fund, Britain will see the weakest economic growth across the G7 next year, slower than even sanctioned Russia. There's more to do on cutting NHS waiting lists, but we've made progress. Seriously? NHS waiting lists in England have just hit another record high of 7.75 million. We've got crumbling hospitals, thousands dying every year on NHS waiting lists. And if all that's not bad enough, remember that promise made by Rishi Sunak in January of an extra 5,000 hospital beds to avert a winter crisis. Well, hang on to your seats, because fast forward 10 months and the number of hospital beds in England has actually fallen by almost 3,000. That's according to an analysis of NHS England data by the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. And we're stopping the boats. More than 25,000 people have crossed the English Channel in small boats so far this year. And what the Prime Minister doesn't want you to know is the huge rise in the numbers of dangerous small boat crossings is in large part a direct consequence of the Brexit deal he championed. Specifically, the government's decision to leave the EU without a returns agreement in place. We have put our country on a better path. Seriously. We've got millions living in poverty and using food banks, crumbling schools and hospitals, and raw sewage dumped in our rivers. That's not a path most people in this country want. 